Hi everyone, my name is Laura and I'm a member of the MailPert team. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the MailPert sign up form editor, exploring all of the options available and at the same time creating a form that looks like this. By the end of this video you should have a clear understanding of how the MailPert form editor works and which styling options you should use to create your desired look. To get started, from your WordPress dashboard, head to MailPoet, Forms, and Add New. Here you can see all of the form types available and a variety of different templates you can use as a starting point. All of these templates are completely customizable, so don't worry if you don't see one that fits your requirements exactly. For this demo, I'm going to create a pop-up form using the newsletter sign-up template as the basis. But the design and setup process is exactly the same for each form type you might just see some slightly different appearance and placement settings. At the top here, I can rename my form. By default, the title will be the same as the template you selected, so I recommend changing this to something more recognisable. Next, you need to select the list you'd like to link to this sign-up form. And in this section, you need to select whether you'd like your new subscribers to see a message after they hit the submit button, or if you'd like to direct them to a sign-up confirmation page instead. Now, let's look at the Styles tab. Note that we're currently on the form settings at the top here, not blocks. We'll be using the blocks tab to style the different elements that make up the form in a moment, but we'll first be using this area to change the background and other general styles and settings. For your background, you can either choose one of these colours, a gradient, or an image for your form fields to sit on. For my form, I'm just going to keep this white. Our website is already pretty colourful and I want it to stand out. You can use this font colour section to set the default font colour for all paragraph blocks within your form. This privacy policy notice down here is a paragraph block and you can see how it changes colour. Setting a font colour here isn't mandatory. You'll be able to adjust the colour of your text in the individual blocks too, but you might like to do this if you plan on only using one colour across all of your paragraph blocks. This font size option changes the size of a copy in any input fields you have on your form. You can see here how it's changing the size in this email field. Font Family allows you to change the font style used across the whole of your form. If you'd like to use different fonts for different sections of copy, you can. We'll cover that in the block section of the tutorial. But you should make sure this font is the correct one you want to use for your input fields. Input Padding enables you to select how much padding there is around the input field text. If you'd like to add a border to your form, you can add this here, changing the size, radius and colour. You can also change the text alignment using the alignment options. The form padding slider allows you to change the amount of padding that surrounds your form content. You might want to revisit this option once you've got your content in so you can see how adding or removing padding impacts your design. Down here you can select the colour for your success message. This is the message that shows when someone completes your form with valid details. And you can also select a colour for the error message that occurs when someone, say, misses out a required field or inputs invalid data. And finally, you can select the style of your close button. This is a little cross that appears in the top right corner. Again, you might decide to change this after you finish designing your form so you can see how the different options work with your design. Under the form placement option just here, you can change the form type you've selected. So say you'd originally picked a pop-up and got part of the way through design and decided you'd prefer a sliding instead, you can change that here. And the custom CSS option enables you to code your own template styles using CSS instead or as well as using the options in the form editor. Now I'm going to move on to the block settings where you can edit and style the individual elements of your form. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you don't have to follow the layout of whichever template you've selected. You're free to add, remove and rearrange these blocks as you please. For my newsletter sign up form, I'm going to start by replacing this image with one that's a bit more in keeping with our brand. Here I'm going to choose to replace it and I'm going to select an image from the WordPress media library. You could also upload a new one from your computer. I'm going to choose this nice bird illustration here and resize it so it isn't quite so big. Next, I'm going to edit this header here. I'm changing its colour to one from our own colour palette and I'm also going to make it a little bigger. You can also edit the font and background colour using this block if you so wish. I'd like this section below to be a little bit smaller so I'm going to change it to a paragraph block and edit some of the font settings. 
I'm also going to give readers a little more information about what's included in our newsletter and how often they'll receive it. Let's now move on to input fields. This template already has an email field, but we like to personalise our emails, so I'm going to add a first name field to this form. To do this, I'm going to add a new block and select the pre-built first name input field. In the block settings, I can change the label that's displayed in the input area or remove it completely, as well as set whether it's a mandatory field or not. In styles, I can choose whether these fields span the full width of the form or not. And I can also decide whether this field should use the styles I set in the beginning of this process in those form settings or switch to setting a custom style for this field. There are a few tweaks I'd like to make, so I'm going to turn this off and apply my own styles. I'm just changing the font colour to the same blue I've used in the rest of my form. I'm going to make sure the background's white and I'm also going to add a border in male power orange. You'll notice that you have the option to apply these styles to all other input fields you've used in your form, which is a real time saver if you want them to look the same. I think this looks okay, but really I'd like the two form fields to sit side by side. So I'm now going to add a new column and drag these two fields into position. Perfect. All that's left for me to do now styling wise is to edit the submit button. You can add your own copy in this field here and like the other blocks we've looked at today, you can customise how it looks using these options. I'm just going to change the background of this one to male poet orange, keep the font colour as white, and increase the size of the text a little. That's better. Now for the moment of truth. What does it look like in action? Unfortunately, Gutenberg is not a full what you see is what you get editor. So to get an accurate idea of how your form will look, you should use the preview button. I'd recommend previewing your form on a regular basis throughout the design stage so you can address any changes and tweaks you need to make there and then. The preview function uses a sample page from your website to show you how your form will look, and you can also see how it'll look on a mobile device. It's on this preview page that you'll find the remaining form options available. Under form placement, you have another chance to change the placement of your form and get a preview of how your existing design would look on other form types. Form width allows you to change the overall width of your form. This is especially important if you've used any columns. You might find that they don't appear in your design until you've adjusted your form width here to make it wide enough to accommodate them. Now you get to decide where your form appears. You can choose all posts, products or pages, or get a bit more targeted. Here you can select specific blog posts, products or pages for your form to appear on, or you can target via category or tag. The animation options offer a variety of different ways your form can appear, from flips to fades or no animation at all. And this display option allows you to set how much time you want to pass before your form appears. As I'm making a pop-up form today, I also have this exit intent option right here. Exit intent forms appear when a user goes to leave your website. They can be really effective at stopping a user in their tracks and encouraging them to make a purchase or continue exploring your website. If you're using the exit intent option, you don't need to set a delay above. Once you've set all these options and are happy with how your form looks, you can exit the preview area and save your form. I'd recommend double checking you're happy with all of your settings and when you're ready for your form to be live, toggle the display the form option to the on position in your form settings. And there you have it. Here's our pop-up form in action. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to use the mail per form editor and are able to start creating some beautiful form designs yourself. We'll be continuing to add form templates over the upcoming months, so make sure you keep an eye out for these. Have a great day.